My name is Musa Adnan. This is Rerooted. That's Nasser Al Yarimi. And here's what we have coming up for you today. Why, why do you feel like mannerisms are important to you? Bro, you have to learn manners before you learn knowledge. That's what the scholars say. Why do you feel like anxiety, depression, feelings of emptiness hit people? Okay, let, let, me, let me rephrase that actually. Have they hit you before these feelings? <laughs> what do you think? Why do you think I've been putting up these posts and whatnot? Like, I put up these posts to show people that it's normal. So you felt to to to, to so that when people um are doing like are going about their life, yeah, they're not kind of clouded in this in, in in this thought of hope all the time. Like, set yourself, be ready for disappointment. What what were the trigger points that you know made you want to become closer to Islam and closer to God, Allah? I started questioning, bro. I started saying to myself, "Yo, there must be more to this, man. There, there has to be an answer." Like, I'm not dying like this. I'm not living my life like this, man. This is, this is, this is, this is a joke. Like, I'm going through all of this negative stuff. Why? Like, yeah, what, yeah, what's, yeah, what's, yeah. what's, what's the bigger there thing? Must, yeah, exactly. There, there must be something. There must be meaning behind this. <laughs> it's all going down, bro. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Master, bro, how's it going? We started, yeah? Yeah, we started. Bang it. I'm good, man. I'm Bro, that. when I was thinking of people I want to get on this podcast, uh. you came to mind. Because a lot of people know you. A lot of people, are, I assume, follow you on Snapchat, Instagram, etc. You've been online for a short amount of time. Mm. Um, a long amount of time, yeah. rather. And mashallah, you have, you know, you've, you've got a pretty big following now. Allah Mubarak. And you're, you're pretty observed as an influencer. One thing that I've noticed about you though, bro, that's a little bit different. And this is, mm. I'll be honest with you, bro, like, cause we're very close on a personal level. <clears throat> this is the reason why I wanted to get you on this podcast. Mm-hmm. Because through this podcast, Rerooted, we're trying to change the perceptions of young Muslims. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah, get it? Yeah. And we're actually trying to make a difference through this. Inshallah, Inshallah. you know, if Allah wills, if God wills. Mm. With you, the way you're different is, you're not scared mm. to show a different side to you that a lot of people traditionally speaking on YouTube online are scared to show so for example me and you we were actually we were with, we were with each other yesterday yeah. and we were talking about this how some people actually they become fake they become fake online mm-hmm. they uh, you know show a certain perception and we live in this age bro we live in this age where people show a different perception of themselves online they are scared to tell people I'm insecure inside. They are scared to tell people, guys, I'm going through anxiety. They are scared to tell people I'm actually very anxious. I'm very conscious of the way I look when I go outside. Mm-hmm. Rather, what they want to show to people is I'm doing very well financially. I'm 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 good. I'm living ama- I'm yeah, living yeah. an amazing life. But with you, what I've seen is not that you you know show every negative thing you do, but you show this side of yourself that's. Yo guys, I'm struggling right now. And I struggle. You've spoken about it in your poetry. Why is it that yeah. you do that? Is that a direct question? That's a direct question. Okay. Why do you do that <clears throat> for? Why do you feel the need to show people like this side of you, which is a very personal side? Um, It's, it's built up based on uh, on numerous amount of things, yeah? Okay. But I would say one of the main things uh, of me showing people why I'm vulnerable in certain situations. Okay. Is because this is the reality, bro. Subhanallah. A lot of people who are, I would, I wouldn't class myself as an influencer, but I'm not ignorant to the fact that people do take me as that. Yeah. Do you get me? Yeah. At the end of the day, you, every man, every man is a shepherd. You, you got your own flock. You're in charge of them, yeah. So to a certain degree, I have a responsibility, yeah. So with this responsibility, bro, I'm trying to show people that other people who have followings, other people who um, are out there in the public, these, like the things that I am vocal about. It's what they're going through, but they keep it inside. Do you get me? So I'm trying to normalize this, bro, and make people see the reality. You guys, listen up. Guys, listen up. Like today, to, to, like, I'm struggling. Do you get me? Yeah. I'm like, Subhanallah, man. I was like going through this ayah. I was going through this verse in the Quran. Yeah. Um, the book of Allah, and I was listening to the verses, and I started thinking about my sins. Yeah. And then through that, I'm like to them. I tell people like, look, guys, man. You know, I have so many sins. I'm out here struggling. Make dua yeah. for me. Make dua that I become a better person, etc. Just to show people, like, your numbers. Even on my number, uh, bro. There's, there's a billion bigger people than me online. Do you get yeah. it? It's not. Do you get me? Yeah. But I'm just the little numbers that I have, bro. Mm. Um, just to show people, like, anybody with a following, 
And the majority of the time you find the people who are going through the maddest of things, the deepest of things, bro, are the people who have big followings. For example, certain YouTubers, okay? yeah, yeah, like yeah. they they started off doing this and now in depression, anxiety, taking pills, mental health issues. Mental health issues. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, bro, I'm, I've am i always been like this and you know me from the start, bro. I've always been trying to normalize this and show people this is normal. Yes, yes. And that's something I want to speak to you about yeah, mm. because... As you mentioned, a lot of online people go through it. Mm. And if these people who are online, who are seen to be like some of the elite yeah. in society, yeah. in terms of like, when you're online, you probably got something to offer, yeah. you know? You got following, you probably got a little bit of finances, etc. People are following you for something, right? So people are looking up to you yeah. in a sense. Yeah. Why do you feel like online people go through this specifically? Or do you feel like it's something that all of us go through? It's something everybody goes through, no doubt, hundred okay. percent. But b before I touch on that topic, bro, yeah, something came to my mind, bro. The reason, the reason why I feel like um, I'm I'm being very vocal about it from the beginning is because, actually, you know, inshallah, every, I'm I'm, I'm my future plans are to do with social media. Do you see where I'm coming from? Yes, yes. So inshallah, yes. my plan is to grow and whatnot, yeah. Mm -hmm. But bro, from the beginning, I'm trying to keep it real with my audience, yeah, because actually, like you said, the elite people who are now very big. Yeah. In the beginning, they weren't really vocal about their problems. So the people who are watching them have built this image in their head that they're the Superman character. That's true. They're, they're the hero. That's true. They're, in hero. They're, they're basically a hero yeah, for them. So now that they see this person as a hero and they see him, for example, uploading videos on YouTube, they see him doing good work, they see him having cars, money, yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. they think, oh, this guy's a hero. Like, and he's also an inspiration. I want to be like this guy. But the moment they see him fall into depression, it, it how can I say it? Because they, because they, yeah because they've been taking influence from this person, it has an effect on them as well. It's like they've seen like can you, metaphorically speaking, bro, cart in a cartoon like when you see Superman or when you see your hero like die is very sad. Yeah, when you yeah, see no, your hero go through something it's sad. Yeah, do you get me? And you think, oh man, the film is gonna be bad after this or whatever. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see where I'm coming from? So actually, when people are looking at these YouTubers or celebrities and whatnot, and they see them at the lowest of times. Their fan or their supporter is now going to be affected by that as well. If they're a fan to that, to that degree, if they're like a major fan, do you see where I'm coming from? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, if so, if if a celebrity dies and I'm a big fan of him, sometimes, um, um, some sometimes a person could be very sad because their because their favorite celebrity has died or whatever. Do you see where I'm coming from? Bro? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm and that's sorry. only because they haven't shown them the reality from the beginning of the struggles they face. And you know what I feel like, bro? There's another side to this coin as well. Do you know what that does in a lot of cases? Mm -hmm. It makes people think because if everyone online, just let's mm -hmm. let's picture this, everyone online, everyone in any sort of elite position looks beautiful. They look yeah, calm. Yeah. They look like they're going through an amazing life. Their life is perfect. Their life is good. Their life is fine. Always smiling. There's no Instagram picture mm -hmm. that's you know making you look sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing like that. Yeah. So when people who are watching these people start going through Anxiety, depression, feelings of emptiness. How is that going to make them feel? Hundred percent. That, that's that's exactly my point. It's, it's going to make them feel mm. low. It's going to make them feel abnormal. And one of the reasons I wanted to speak about with <coughs> this with you is because both of us, as people online, as people who are young, you know, we're both. Lama, right? You just turned twenty. Mm -hmm. I'm twenty-two. We're both relatively young, and we've both gone through issues pertaining to this sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we're very we're very similar. Yeah, yeah even yeah. like from the first day we met, like yeah, we're, yeah. we're very we share similar thoughts and similar definitely, ways about definitely, them. definitely. And why do you feel like anxiety, depression, feelings of emptiness hit people? Uh, okay, let, let me let me rephrase that. Actually, have they hit you before these feelings? Yeah, hundred percent, man. <laughs> what do you think? Why do you think I've been putting up these posts and whatnot? Like. I put up these posts to show people that it's normal. So you felt to to to, to so that when people um are, are doing like are going about their life, yeah, they're not kind of clouded in this in in, in this thought of hope all the time. Like set yourself, be ready for disappointment. You see yeah. what I'm coming from? But yeah, yeah, not yeah, yeah. don't be a pessimist. Yeah, but be ready for disappointment and know how you're gonna find do a quick U-turn and come out of it. Yes, you see what I'm coming from? Yes. So, okay, I've been through. So how did you handle these thoughts? What what kind of what kind of results did these thoughts and these you know these issues in your mind bring? In your life, um, I would say, bro, it all started in college, innit? Okay. I was in college, and I was going through certain things, um, and then from there, 
uh, yeah, from there, like, I was going through a lot of things, man. And from there, I developed this kind of, I started to overthink. Okay. I started to overthink. That's I something to struggle with a lot. Yeah, actually, yeah, I started to start thinking deeply, bro. Yeah. I'm saying, if you think w- that what I post now is deep, and I tell people, look, this is, um, this is the solution to depression, this is the solution to this, blah, blah, blah. Actually, before I used to, this was my focus. Before okay. I used to heavily post about these things, bro, to make it clear to people that this is real, man. Um, but yeah, actually, I've, 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 like, I've been through these things, you get me? Mm. Um, and what made me go through this, bro, sometimes, bro, it starts off with just a thought. Yeah. And with that thought, you start deep in the thought so much. Yeah. You've created a cloud now. Yes. And with that cloud, it's like, it's like you know when you're brainstorming, bro, in school? Yeah, and the yeah, teacher yeah, tells yeah. you brainstorm. Yes. You, in the beginning, you're stuck. You can't brainstorm. You start with, with the main topic. You circle yeah. that topic. And then all of a sudden, you've, you've, you, you're, drawing, you're drawing out lines that come out of this um, bubble, yeah? And, and the first topic comes out. And then from there you make it like a, a sub subtitle, another thing and another thing and another thing and another thing. And you're thinking about these things deeply, bro, to the point where um, sometimes, bro, I know I would create the problems for myself. Yeah, before you know it, you've got, all you know is problems. Yeah. All you know in your mind is sadness. All you know in your mind yeah. is an- anxiety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, whenever a bad thing, yeah. before when a bad thing would happen to you, you won't overthink it. Yeah, you won't, you know, automatically go into these states yeah. of being. But now, when anything bad happens to you, anything negative, you overthink. Mm-hmm. You feel depressed about that thing. You become anxious. Yeah. You, you go through all of these things. So, how did these thoughts and these feelings affect your life? Um, like I think w- it, it, definitely, it definitely affected my life in a good way. Okay. In a, in a very good way. Uh, how so? But obviously, when you're going through it, it's not the best. Yeah. yeah. But the outcome has always been... Actually, like. I'd say Alhamdulillah because I know how to get out of these certain situations. But bro, there's certain people who might be listening to this or certain people who have gone through these things who are still stuck there. Yes, and, th- and th- this, those are the people that I want to address this to. Yeah, actually, they're, st- they're still stuck there. Like me, bro, it took me time to find my way out. Not saying that I don't go through this stuff now. I still go through it, but I know how to come out of it quickly, actually. For example, for example, okay. um, uh, I wouldn't consider myself like a person who's majorly religious, yeah? Okay. But actually... Religion is always my first turning point when I'm going through these things. Okay. I would listen to Quran. That's like that's that's the way I kind of escape it. Do you get me? Like when I'm going through something, bro, and 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 those those thoughts are about to come. Before they come, I play Quran, and it's like I've made that my first turning turning point. Not with just like thoughts and anxiety or whatever, but even when I'm ill, if I have a headache, bro, I don't turn to paracetamol straight away. Not because oh look at me, <laughs> like you said, taqwa attack. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> None yeah. of that stuff. Like yeah. literally, bro. Because oh, I really believe the Quran will bring me shifa. Yeah. Even in the Quran, Allah says that the Quran has been sent down as a shifa. Yes. As a cure. That's now, what, now, they, they, but there's two. I've noticed yeah. on that there's actually two there's, extremes. There's, okay. There's two extremes yeah. where people will will, will will think that what we're saying is, hang on, are you saying that I just I'm going through all of these thoughts of. Mm-hmm breakdowns and yeah. anxiety and depression and mm. overthinking well I just listen to Quran and it's gone 100% I agree with that let me tell you something though let me tell you something Akhia. this is something I always tell people bro and I tell people to kind of give this fact importance bro not everybody like even though the cure and the solutions are in the Quran but not everybody wants to hear that okay like pitch the idea to them later but in the beginning bro some people might just want to be taken out spoken to shown companionship shown love shown affection like if there's a young brother and he's on the streets because you know he comes from a from a broken home and and he's seen his brother go to jail and his mom's stressing over bills and 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 um you know he's seen stabbings uh, he's seen his family members get put into jail and this that and the other bro he's not gonna ideally listen to you when you say bro read quran no but or, some or, or yeah or or bro um this is what God says. Yeah, you see yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. People don't want to hear that, firstly. It's like, for them, it's like, obviously, patience is a good attribute to have, yeah? But, bro, a lot of people, a lot of people, when you tell these things, bro, like, when you tell these things to them, patience is not on their mind in the beginning. They just want action that will bring a solution straight away. But before, before you tell them, um, uh, before you tell them, before you say to them, bro, like, read Quran, this, that, bro, you need to give them, you need to nurture them, bro. There's also another aspect of Don Nasser that we can't forget where Islam and the Quran and 
you know our way of life as a whole does not promote this idea of just listen to the Quran mm-hmm. yeah, and, of don't, and don't try your Honestly, means. You've got to be practical. You, get, yeah, 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 you, got, you have to. Like if a guy is lying around now and he's saying, and he reads a verse in the Quran where Allah is yes. the provider and he's sitting at home every day, how is he going to get a job? Of exactly. course, it won't work like that. You have to come yes. with the means. Yes. You see where I'm coming from? But bro, like people need to understand that not everybody wants to hear religion. Yes, yes, it's true. Do you get me? It's true. So in the beginning, in the beginning stages, bro, you just have to like be loving and affectionate to the person and show them that you you, you relate with them. Do you see where I'm coming from? There's a beautiful way Especially I like, when you yeah. have experience in this stuff, bro, mm-hmm. and people and, and you share your stories, people open up to you more and they trust you more, man. There's a beautiful way I like to think of this. I like to think of it as you're going through problems, you're going through anxiety, you're going through depression, you're going through feelings of you know inner deep deep rooted issues, mm-hmm. you know, deep rooted issues within your mind, within your heart. There are practical. There may be practical reasons why you're going through this. Mm-hmm. You know, there may be a chemical imbalance in your mind. You need to go to the doctor for that. Mm-hmm. You need to read the Quran. There is shifa in the Quran, no doubt. But as we are encouraging Islam, you tie your camel first, and then you trust in Allah. So you try your best. So you try your best by going to the doctor, by speaking to the doctor, by doing all of these things, and you read the Quran at the same time. When you get that shifa, though, you have to associate that shifa. Shifa, for anyone that doesn't know what it means, is when you get that cure, when you get that solution in your life, you associate that with God. Mm-hmm. You see? Mm-hmm. So the means that Allah may give that to you by may be medicine, mm-hmm. but it's from Allah. 100%. But then again, we can't like we can't ignore the fact that the Quran in and within of itself is the cure. Is, come from. But, but it, I, yes, I understand yes, what you're yes, saying. Yes, 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 yes. Now we live in this Western world, we've got NHS, Alhamdulillah, everything's, we got free yeah. treatment and whatnot. Yes. But I think because of that, people are now Neglecting the fact that the That's Qu- what I'm saying Quran, There's two extremes The Quran alone Because before Bro before There was no hospitals Yeah Do you see where I'm coming yeah. from So when that verse Was revealed bro What was Allah speaking about Allah wasn't speaking about a hospital Allah was speaking about doctors But Obviously later on as, as we, Like when Islam isn't backwards You see what I'm saying bro We're yeah. going gonna to improve We're going to develop And whatnot. Now that we have this It's very good So utilise it Exactly yeah. Exactly We utilise what we have And you know Because I knew We are going to speak about this There's mm. a few Few you know, small points I wanted to actually touch upon to give some of our listeners mm-hmm. that they can take away from if they're going through things like this. You know, oftentimes overthinking, depression, anxiety. From my research that I've done, there's some really beneficial uh, websites out there: mentalhealth.org, mm-hmm. mind.org. Beautiful websites to go to. NHS has some really, really good stuff on mental health statistics and facts. And from my research, there's a few points that will learn can really, really benefit your mind. One of the things is eating well, eating well. And surprisingly, bro, enough, this makes a big difference with the way that you think. If, you, if you're going through all of these problems and you're not eating well, you're not giving yourself, your body, the rights that it deserves, mm-hmm. that may be some, something that One can really, causes. really help you. Yeah, yeah. One of the things that can really, really help you as well. Another thing is sometimes actually we overwork ourselves. One of the websites I actually looked at, my, uh, uh, mentalhealth.org, it mentioned how People sometimes need to take a break. 100%. The society we live in, bro, 100%. is so fast-paced. Everyone, you know, you're waking up, you're going to work, you're coming home, you're watching your favourite show, you're going to sleep, you're going to work. Your mind's not even getting 100%. time to breathe. Yeah, your mind's man. not getting time to think. You need to take a break and recharge, bro, man. Yeah, you your got iPhone's to... not going to be full power the whole day, bro. Yeah, especially if you're doing the same thing on it every yeah, single day. 100%. It's going to, you know, you, yeah, man. if your iPhone needs a charge, your any anything in life that we have mm-hmm. needs a charge, you need sleep. The fact that we sleep at night, Allah, has, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, has made that for us to recharge. Mm-hmm. In the same way, your mind needs that as well sometimes. Take a break. Definitely. Take a break from the overthinking. Take a break. And sometimes taking a break could mean going abroad. There's also another thing I found really, really interesting. Being sociable. Mm-hmm. Becoming more sociable. And on one of the websites I went on, and these are all trustworthy. I'm not going on random websites. Yeah, these yeah, are all yeah. trustworthy, trustworthy websites. Yeah, yeah. You know, awesome. NHS and all of these websites. One of them mentioned, you know what the first thing that they mentioned is? One of the first causes that we know of mental health issues or things, one of the first things that help rather with mental health issues is, do you know what it is, bro? Talking to people. That's a big thing, man. I'm not going to lie, bro. Talking to Akhi, people. I'm saying to you, bro, three years of my life, I was stuck in this bubble of not speaking to anyone. Yes, I'm saying to you, the only time I started speaking to people, not random people, but like my actual friends, yeah, was maybe, I'd, I'd say this year, man. 
Bro, do you remember that message I sent to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah, was I that? Uh, a couple months ago. A couple months ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. I sent, I, I sent you a message. And bro, that's like after what three years of our relationship. Yeah, bro? about like we, bro. I got, I got. I'm going through some issues. We need to talk about them. Yeah, you literally. Know? You know, it's, sometimes like I'm not gonna lie, bro. Three years, of my ego, not ego, but the fact that I was, I was thinking to myself, nah, man, these people don't like care. Even if the person doesn't care, it helps. Like you know, they say what a problem, <laughs> a problem, a problem shared is a problem halved. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you get me? So I was like, you know, what, let me try this. Let me see what this nonsense is about. Yeah, I wasn't uh, paying attention to. You weren't paying attention. Yeah, I was like, let me just try it. Yeah. So, bro, I started speaking to people who I know would give me good advice to see how I'm coming from. I think I spoke to about two, three people. Yeah, like two, yeah, literally two, three people, man. Um, mm. But, bro, like, the and it really helped. Actually, it helped, man. Of course, bro. So, how, do, would you say, like, it's significant actually, here? Do, do, should I tell you why it helped? Why? Because these people, they weren't oblivious to the fact that these things exist. Mm. When I spoke to these people about what I'm going through and whatnot, they, they, they could relate with it because of yes. something they've been through before. Guys, guys, guys. You guys. never know if a person will relate with you, man. Yeah. Like if you're, and I, I was having a conversation with a person, I think it was last week or something, yeah, and they were going through the same issue. I was telling them, look, just talk to me. Speak to me. You get me like, bro, come on, man. And then they were like, nah, trust me, you won't get it, bloody blah, blah. I was like to me, you know what? Forget it. Don't even, don't even message me. Mm. I'm going to link up and we'll speak about it. Is that okay? Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. We met up and whatnot, and then actually, when he started speaking, and when I started responding to him, he found out that the stuff he's going through was the same stuff that I was going through. Yeah. When yeah. I told him how I overcame that, or when I still go through it, how I overcome it, he was like, "You know what? I'm gonna try that." And it's he like tried it, and he could see it working. I'll give another an example of mine since you gave one of mm -hmm. yours. I was going through some issues like this, overthinking, doubts, waswas, all of these sort mm -hmm. of problems. Waswas in 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 our Islamic tradition is when you are having thoughts from the shaitan, insinuating whispers. Mm -hmm doubts about things etc and it, they often in medical terms they call it religious OCD so a person's having OCD yeah, about their cleanliness and stuff like that but check this out I spoke to, I thought you know what Ach, it's been years I've been going through this problem years and years and years and I left my dad who I knew is going to be the best person to talk to as last resort I had spoken to different people bro I did speak to people but I wasn't open but bro, you you can be open with you know. I mean, this is subjective as well. But alhamdulillah, the relationship I have with my dad, I can yeah. be very open with. Yeah, him. yeah. So I said, you know what, Baba, I call my dad Baba. If anyone finds that funny, um, <laughs> so I said, you know what, Baba, I'm going through these issues in my head, and they're really affecting me. And I feel, and you know what, bro, Nasser, I kid you not, I felt like I was alone in these issues. You know that, mm -hmm. and oftentimes yeah, yeah. many people. Even though mental health is sp spoken about online mm. many times, people often have this thing of, I'm alone in this. 100%. I'm alone in this. Yeah, I'm yeah, the yeah. only one going through this in the world. But when I spoke to my dad, he was like, <laughs> I went through this stuff in my 20s. This is nothing. you got to ignore it all. you got to just live. you got to be happy. you yeah, got to yeah, do all of these yeah, things, etc. Bro, you know what? My dad, bro, my dad said obvious things to me, bro. But just hearing it from another person yeah, just brings this hope into <clears> you. <throat> so, you know, one thing, if there's one thing that I want to leave this topic on, guys, talk to people. Before you leave that topic, though. Talk to people. Go on. Let me add something to that. Go on, add some masala into it. Bro, and spice. A bit of, bit of spice. Bro, Allahum Barak, you've... Not to say, uh, bro, I love my family. You see where I'm coming from. I yeah. can speak to my family about anything almost, yeah? Yeah. But with you, bro, Allahum Barak, um... You were able to speak to your dad about that. Yeah. I'm not saying me, but I'm saying there's a lot of people, bro, whose they parents are very cultural. Yeah. If you tell your mum, listen, mum, I'm depressed. Listen, dad, I'm depressed. They'll look at you and laugh at you, bruv. Depressed. You're not even 15, bruv. You're not even 16. Like your little kid. And some people associate, what? some parents are cultural. They associate these things with, oh, someone's got magic on you. Yeah, literally, yeah. Straight up. <laughs> it's a head black magic. See what I'm saying? Um, Bro, some people can't speak to their parents or family about this kind of stuff. So what should They'll they do? Because they feel like the Western, the Western world has kind of mm. like installed this kind of ideology of yo, um, if things aren't going my way, I'm gonna feel depressed over it, and khalas, that's it. Nothing's gonna work out for me. So, bro, they can't, they can't, they physically can't speak to their parents or mm. people in their family. Mm. Bro, these are people you're living with every day, you're joking with every day, you're smiling with every day. And you also argue when you have annoying brothers and sisters. You're going to argue, of course, and whatnot. Yeah. But you've never, yeah. ever spoken to them about something deep. Mm. So for you to now to come out when you're 17 years old, 18 years old, 20 years old, 21, 22, it's like, and speak to them about 
what you're going through your, your depression or your yeah, anxiety yeah. or whatever they're gonna think what the hell it took you 22 years to speak to me about this yeah see what i'm saying and they, they're not gonna take you seriously sometimes your family so aren't the some, best people some some yeah some for some people and yeah, I'm, yeah bro, i know i know a lot of people bro who are like that a lot of people who are like that mm-hmm. in that situation especially when their parents are so like bro i'll call it cultural corruption man mm-hmm. they're not it, they're not able to relate with the kids man but you know in that case there are always friends you have there are always people um, you need to break that th- this barrier down that you're creating mm. for yourself, yeah. and you need to go and you need to have a chat with this person that you trust, 100%. anyone that you trust, inshallah. Bro, and also moving on to that, uh, moving on to you know another thing I wanted to speak to you about, bro, is I wanted to speak to you about how you started practicing. Oh, I don't like that word, man. Okay, how you started to become closer to God. Okay. Let's say that. Yeah. How you started. To become closer to God, yeah. Because you know, as a young person, etc., you know, in in this society, you're only 20 years old, yeah. and a lot of people associate religion or going near religion as what are you doing? You're young, you got your whole life. What what were the trigger points that you know made you want to become closer to Islam and closer to God, Allah? Uh, let me uh, I'll just bullet point all this, yeah. And all I'll, right, I'll go into it a bit more after. Okay, inshallah. Yeah. Okay, I've had. People, um, I was doing music, yeah, through that you know what comes with music and whatnot performances, shows, blah blah blah, um, attention from girls, all that stuff, um, okay, getting calls for bookings, uh, a studio with like rappers and people in the studio, in the studio, people are just doing madness. I guess for people, the closest friends to me, actually, when I didn't have any friends, had about handful a handful of friends okay people who i grew up with people who have you know been in deeply involved in my life turn into like fake people okay um doing mad stuff behind my back mm. and me finding out after um okay, i've seen close friends die okay. okay family members go to prison okay leaving my family affected deeply yeah um okay, people that are dear to my heart getting getting stabbed in the heart multiple times shootings this that and the other bro um uh things actually things that I, I wanted to pursue yeah things that I wanted to do in my life wasn't working okay every time I tried something it wouldn't work it wouldn't work it wouldn't work and the moment I would think it was about to work it would flop it wouldn't work mm. so okay, I, I, so like a lot of negative things happening yeah, at the pe- same people time people I was around you know when I was when I, when I needed them they weren't really there um yeah, everything was just so negative, bro, in my life. Like, mm. I didn't, I didn't know Quran. I, yeah. I was just stuck in this bubble of just negativity. You see me? Yeah. So, anyways, um, all that happened, and I started questioning, bro. I started saying to myself, "Yo, there must be more to this, man. There, there has to be an answer. Like, I'm not mm. dying like this. I'm not living my life like this, man. This is, this is, this is." It's a joke. Like I'm going through all of this negative stuff. Why? Like, yeah, what, yeah, what's yeah, what's yeah. Th- what's the bigger there thing? Must, yeah, exactly. There, there must be something. There must be meaning behind this. Yes. So, I I put on a thobe <laughs> in college times. Okay, I didn't know anything. I just said to myself, you know what? My mom always tells me read Quran, pray, and whatnot. Let me just try this. So thobe is like an Islamic dress. Yeah, yeah thobe, or, or a like thobe is an Islamic garment that that the men wear. Yeah, cultural. Yeah. Uh, you know, from from yeah, the yeah, east and yeah. cultural garment. Yeah. Not to say that your your level of belief lies in your garment, of but for me not. that was my first turning point. Yeah, that's because I looked at the imam. I was like, okay, cool. This guy is of this level of piety. Oh, I want to dress like him. I want to dress like him. Okay. Put on a thobe. I deleted all the music from my phone. Every day I would walk to college just listening to Quran. I didn't even know Arabic's my first language, bro. We speak Ami Arabic at home. The the general Arabic. This thing okay. So Quranic Arabic is very. It's very heavy in its meanings, yes. and it's yeah. very deep in its meanings. It's very deep. Yeah. Like you, people, people are, people take, how people do, people, people take loads of time annotating like a piece by Shakespeare. Like the Quran has different, uh, different, different, different interpretations from different people of knowledge and whatnot. Like this is a yeah. big thing. You see, I'm coming from. So I didn't really understand what was being said in the you Quran. You didn't understand the Quran. Yeah, okay. I didn't understand the Quran. So I would just listen to it For the sake of listening to Quran so And knowing I'm getting a good deed So, so why did you wh- Because you, I think you skipped a big bit here bro. Yeah. Why did you just turn to Islam all of a sudden Yeah that's how I, I, Okay actually, I'm coming to it I'm coming all to right, it Alright go on go on So literally bro yeah. I would do this every day And it felt like I was forcing it 
yeah. so I kept forcing myself ah, to the point okay. where slowly slowly I'm picking up one two words looking it up what does this mean mm-hmm. and what not and one time I stopped listening to Quran I was walking to college and my phone died and that day I felt sad bro because uh-huh. this has been my routine for so long now and my phone is dead I've got a long journey home okay. and I have no Quran to listen to Okay. see where I'm coming from that was the moment I clocked my heart has been used to this now uh-huh. so from there I was like you know what there, there must be more to this it's not just wearing a thobe and reading the Quran yeah yeah there's meaning so, there's yeah. more, more not that the Quran yeah. is not meaning but there's w- yeah, yeah, what's, yeah. what's the meanings yeah. and everything literally and actually that day I went home randomly I got a DM from my brother saying bro I can see you going through a lot of stuff come let's link up I brushed it off Two weeks later, he DMs me again, bro, come let's link up. I'm like, you know what? Let me give this a try. We linked up. We played football. After football, we went to a restaurant. At that restaurant, I see one guy trying to pay for the whole bill. I've never seen this before. I came from an era where people are like, bro, where's my one pound? Where's my 50p that you owe me? Yeah, you get me, bro? I gave you 50p last time. I came from that kind of background. You see where I'm yeah. coming from? So when I'm seeing this now, bro, it's very new to me. So, And and, and it shows a lot of care. A yeah, man yeah. that you just met has shown you care. And it's sincere care. It's sincere care. Yeah. You see where I'm coming from? Like, just make that for me. Yeah? yeah. So I saw that. From there, I met I met from 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 that person. I met another person. From there, I met new people, new people, new people. Started hanging around with people of knowledge, students of knowledge from Medina, this, that, and the it's other beautiful. abroad. Like it, it just opened doors. All I knew, the only thing I turned to was listen to Quran. Like if 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 your intentions are pure, bro, Allah is gonna find a way out for you, man. From it's the ayah in the Quran. Subhanallah. Allah, uh, what was it? Allah, what was it? Allah, what was it? Um, and whoever f- whoever fears Allah, whoever comes with God consciousness, um, Allah will find a way out for him from ways and imagines that he didn't from from ways and avenues uh, in which he didn't imagine. So, so for me, bro, it's crazy. I didn't know what Tawheed was. I didn't know what Shirk was. I was just wearing a thobe, listen to Quran, mm-hmm. and just praying my salah. And I was reading the, the surahs, and I didn't know what the surahs meant. But f- because I came with that sincere intention, Allah yeah. has now given this to me. You know what I find in so inspirational about this here, and many many people's stories to Islam. You know, when they were given, you know, acts of da'wah, acts mm-hmm. of kindness, mannerisms. Yeah. You mentioned the big thing. One of the big things that affected you was what? The mannerisms of people you saw around you. We're going to go into that. Yeah. We're going to talk about that. What I find so beautiful about this, bro, is that you mentioned in the beginning of your story so much negativity. This happening to people, bad things happening to people around me, anxiety, depression. We started speaking about mental health. We spoke about it a lot. All of these sort of things going on in your head. And you're finding your solution in Islam. You're finding your happiness in becoming closer to God. Yeah. To the extent where when, you, when you're not listening to the words of God, when you're not listening to words of Allah, you, you're, you're feeling like, okay, something's missing. there's something missing here yeah, in my life. Of course. You know, there's something missing here in my life. You know, did, do you feel like that like brought this sense of like purpose to you? 100% bro. Like explain that Because okay, now My life I don't see my life without this I can't see my life without Quran I can't see my life without being around good people I can't skip a day bro Not saying okay, well, if you knew, I'm just going to say this to the camera Yeah, Because I, I really don't want people to Okay if you knew my sins If my sins came up as a bubble on top of my head You'll think Let me switch off this podcast Do you get me <laughs> Just just to show people yeah, Do you get me yeah. okay, But I, it's I'll real, keep it real. real I'll keep it real yeah. bro But I can't go a day without, without Quran Wow At least listening or reading it Or as I'm walking Reading it from my mouth That's how engrossed you Yeah are. I can't I don't see a day of my life Without Quran Impossible What would you say to someone Who's never listened to the Quran In a long time Or maybe a non-Muslim That's listening yeah. A person who You know Is like watching this podcast Or listening to it And like <clears throat> I've never listened yeah. to this You know Why, why yeah. should I listen to the Quran I've said this on another podcast So I'm going to quickly 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 say I'm going to try to okay. wrap it up In a minute yeah um, force yourself The reason why I say Force yourself Is because Musa If you go to the gym now We're trying to get a wedge Summer's coming up And whatnot. not yeah If we okay. had that mentality I beef for mentality As they call it <laughs> well, We don't do that though yeah um, But if we want to go To the gym now Okay <laughs> Can you get hench in one day Can you get muscular Like a bodybuilder in one day No Why is that It takes you know time It takes time it takes right It takes time to takes you know, time. Get bro, good things Good Cause, So when I'm in the gym now And I'm lifting these weights bro I'm lifting up these weights I'm getting those reps in I'm getting those repetitions in The next set and whatnot. I'm sweating and my muscles come to a stage where they're fully fatigued, they can't handle anymore. But this is the time where if I get this super set in, I know tomorrow my muscle my muscle's gonna rip after I have that protein shake, repair, quick repair, it's yeah. gonna grow back stronger and bigger. Trust me. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I have to force myself to get that super set in. Mm. And every rep is if, if I have a five kg and I've dropped if I was start if I was say lifting forty kg and from my super set I drop to fifteen, actually that's gonna burn. It's gonna hurt your muscles, bro. 
it's not gonna feel nice do you get me mm. um but you know throughout that process of you lifting these weights when you don't like doing it when the pain is too much there's gonna be a good outcome coming from it mm-hmm. which is your summer body okay you're gonna have a good athletic body yeah so with the Quran the same thing in the beginning you might not understand it the same way I didn't understand it mm. even though I speak Arabic and my par- both my parents are Yemeni and both my grandparents are Yemeni and my grandparents mm-hmm. are Yemeni I didn't understand it so you have to force yourself bro because your heart is like a muscle mm-hmm. actually. if one day is taking in this much information the next day it's going to grow and it's going to need new information yes, you're going to grow yes. as a person you're going to start to reap its fruits later on only now am I seeing the fruits of what I learned from the beginning. Mm. Okay, even a scholar in Islam, for any non-Muslims listening, I think it was Sheikh uh, Uthaymin. He said the knowledge that uh, Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin. He said the knowledge that remained with us is the knowledge that we learned when we were when we when we were youthful. Ah, uh, okay. See what I'm saying? And mm. even I think it was Ibn al-Baghdadi, uh, another scholar. He said that the khair is 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 in the young people. Good is so, in okay, the yeah. People. Good is in the young people. So, bro, I was doing all the, the forcing. Forcing, tr- trying to be religious, I was doing it at a young age, hmm. and even uh, carrying on that statement from 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 the scholar, he said later on you will reap its fruits. Yeah, and I'm still twenty, bro. I'm still I'm still in my youth. I'm still very young. I'm st- slowly slowly seeing a few things, like my recitation is getting better, bro. This is one thing I really want to say, bro. Like people might see me on Instagram, and and hear like a Quran recitation and whatnot. Um, I don't think. I'm I'm the best reciter or one of the best reciters. In fact, I think I'm one of the lowest, bro. You know, like, do you get me? But, actually, in the beginning, when I first started reading Quran, I'm talking two, three years ago. Yeah. If you heard my voice, yeah, it's peak. <laughs> okay. Actually, you would turn it off. Okay. <laughs> this I've so never progress. I progress. Okay, I've mm. never not saying I have a good voice now, but I've never had a good voice. Mm. Never, never. It just came with practice, ah. and I was just forcing it. Allah Akbar. So the same gym analogy apply that in your in apply your life and your connection with God. God. That's it. Keep working, keep working hard. But mm-hmm. you know what the thing is? You know the gym analogy? I understand what you're saying, mm. but one thing that we have to mention is Allah is even Allah, of course, Allah is bigger than that. Mm. We know from a hadith Qudsi that yeah. you know where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expresses to us directly a narration that God, mm. you know, tells us is when you take steps towards Allah, Allah runs to you. He comes rushing towards you. That's how Allah is. So it's like we can use the gym analogy, but it's like it'll be even faster yeah, than gym. 100%. It'll exactly. be even faster yeah, than yeah, gym. It'll yeah, be yeah. even easier, you know. I think right, let's, let's take a different gym analogy. Inject like it's like injecting yourself with steroids. <laughs> <laughs> All right then, mate. Let's go. <laughs> But yeah, you get not, I mean, not that we advocate using nah, steroids. We don't, we don't, we don't yeah. advocate using <laughs> u- using steroids. Okay, that's that's we're going somewhere else. Like you now. said you said it's like it's, it's a faster process. Yeah, I yeah, gave you yeah. a faster process, isn't it? You know, you know, I know. You know, one thing I've struggled with in yeah. the past. <clears throat> Anyone who subscribed to me on YouTube will definitely understand this. Quick plug, is yeah, quick plug. Um, inconsistency, man. Mm. I and I, I put my hands up, you know, and I say inconsistency. Is something I've heavily struggled with, man. Yeah. You know, with with everything. You know, uh, gym, <laughs> yeah. eating clean. You know, Mohsen, You know, our production brother. You know, he knows this about me. I'll be like, I want to eat clean today, bro. I want to eat clean. I'm going on a diet. I've done it before for a week. Two days later, I'm eating KFC, bro. I mean, it keeps, yeah, it's like it's difficult, bro. And yeah. I, I'll put my hands up to admit that because I'm sure a lot of other people struggle with this. Yeah. How has your relationship with consistency been? Okay, my one, one is second. a bit different. Tell the truth. Yeah, okay, mine's, mine's a bit different. It's very similar, but <clears throat> yeah, I think it comes from an angle of excitement. The reason why I say that, bro, is because growing up, I had a l- and I still do, bro. I have a lot of different hobbies, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have a l- not in an yeah. arrogant way, but actually, I was good at a lot of things. Do you see what I'm saying? Easy, um, now. huh? Easy now. <laughs> yeah, go. No. go. <laughs> I'm saying, <laughs> yeah, this guy, what can it? <laughs> yeah, actually, bro, like. I grew up. No, I know you are. You're very I grew, up, I grew up doing music, football. Okay, football. Played for Tottenham. Playing piano. That's a big thing, yeah. Okay, I went to Belgium with Tottenham. Played against Dortmund, Schalke, Bayern Munich. Wow. At age fourteen, um, sorry, at age fifteen. Okay. Um, brought up, like, played the piano. Hmm. Um, I was doing. I still do video directing, cinematography. Yeah. Video editing. You got to shoot tomorrow. Yeah, I got to shoot tomorrow. Okay, like sound engineering. It's very um, inspirational. Yeah. Um. 
uh, I love traveling, bro. I'm the type of guy, like even even I'm going Manchester on Saturday. I've been booked for Manchester on Saturday, bro. Yeah. And I told the brother, don't book a train ticket, book a coach ticket. Wow. Yeah. Trains too quick. Okay, I love long journeys, bro. Traveling, just looking at. That's that's deep, man. Do you get me, bro? There's there's a, and I know, bro. My social media doesn't sh- like show this side to me. I've never shown. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Okay, I've never, I've only shown a bit of boxing. Okay, I've only shown a bit of football. Like, it's only one free kick mm. I've taken on, on my Instagram. Yeah. I've <laughs> never, you told me this today, okay, I've never shown that I'm interested in directing video production and whatnot. I've never really promoted that. Yeah. Okay, I've never shown myself playing piano or this, that, and the other, bro. Like, there's a lot more to me that you only find out if you ask. Mm. If I have had, I've had friends that I've known for 15 years, bro. Um, Sorry, that for like 10 years, bro. And then when they see me do something like, whoa, you actually do this? I was like, bro, like, I've been, I've been doing this. <laughs> no, mm, <laughs> not yeah. like, not in an me? arrogant way, but like, but like, this is, this is how okay, I am. I'm very, yeah. how can I say it, bro? I don't like speaking about myself, but you kind of have to unfold me, bro. So how does that link to consistency? Because I had so many different hobbies, bro. Oh, I so like every, you jump I, didn't, I didn't have a main focus. Mm. Bro, like from football to, 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 to boxing, to, bro, to so doing Wing Chun, bro. to, Bro, uh, 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 playing for a football team to playing a piano to being a studio, Bro, being a sound engineer in yeah. the studio to being a sound engineer editing people's quote yeah. arm recitations yeah. to film productions to um, uh, yeah, Bro, yeah, I was yeah. I was getting pulled out of, of classes at year nine to help the sixth formers yeah do their coursework for 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 video directing. Mm. See what I'm saying, yeah. Bro? Like. So many different, <laughs> like, yeah. actually, it's, it's mad, bro. Like, I've had so many different focuses in life, bro. Like, yeah. my studies, bro. People don't know what I'm doing right now with regards to studies, mm. only because I don't publicize it. I don't, yeah, I've yeah, never I posted what I'm doing with my studies mm. on social media, actually. Mm. See, where I'm coming from, like. So, do you feel like, because I had sorry on on to, to, to on, get up, if anyone didn't understand, because I had so many different things I loved and I was kind of good at, I've never had a main focus up until. So very recently and even even then it's it's really interesting because you said this earlier in the podcast and I genuinely believe we're very similar in different ways yeah. like in the same way I've had that as well yeah. but not like with the, some of the specifics you mentioned yeah. but like for example I'll go gym with some brothers you know them yeah. and I'll bang out gym and I'm like yeah I want to do this for the yeah, rest yeah, of my yeah. life that pump and then, gets you guys and then two <laughs> months later I'm in a different gym doing Muay Thai yeah and mm. then next week I'm doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu yeah, 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 and yeah. then I'm really focusing on Quran which uh, alhamdulillah I, I'll be honest I still do that yeah. alhamdulillah because Quran is something once I found it once again you need to look into it if you're not con- connected with it just read the Quran it's amazing but like once I, I jump from different things but you know I started to see that as a negative thing about myself because mm-hmm. I started to feel like I need to focus more on things so that I can really reap fruits so I started choosing is that how you became as well like you started choosing what you want to focus on um, I think I'm only getting to that process now now okay do you get me? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I kind of know what I want to do now. Yeah, yeah. And it's so, only been, so you're focusing on yeah, it. Yeah, it's only been this year where I've kind of put my. And don't you relate, yeah, that when you do things consistently and you focus on them, bro, the fruits that sometimes you see are unbelievable. Hundred percent. Even the hadith of the prophet what was it. The hadith of the prophet. The most Salah beloved deeds to Allah. The most, b- the best deeds, the mm-hmm. best deeds are deeds that are done. This is the prophet of Islam. The prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam expresses to us that the best deeds that are done are those that are done consistently, regularly. Even if they're small, even if they're small, that just goes to show you what, what, bro. What's being emphasized here? To me, when I reflect upon this, what's being emphasized here is consistency, mm-hmm. because anyone can do small good deeds. Yeah. Why didn't the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam just say peace be upon him? Just say, do small deeds. Uh-huh. He mentioned regular, being regular in them, mm-hmm. because when you do things regularly. They really, really benefit you. And when you don't, when you don't do things in a regular way, this is what I've learned from my life. This is what I've learned from my life. You start to not get far in that thing. You don't get far in that thing. You lose motivation easily because you start thinking of yourself, man, I'm just inconsistent in everything. What am I going to be good at? So then what that thought leads to is self-hate. or You don't love yourself anymore. You're not loving yourself. And when I've noticed, bro, I'm consistent now to bring benefits. I've noticed I'm really, really, really like happy with myself. I feel satisfied. I'm building good habits. I'm building momentum as well in that thing. Do you get it? Don't you notice that? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Let's say you start 
playing football. Mm. The first four weeks for you, you're going to be okay. Bro, it's been six months you're playing football now. Your momentum, like you're growing. Yeah, yeah. You're becoming so much better, mm. so much quicker. Mm. And now it's been a year and the progress you've made is amazing. Yeah. Imagine putting that thought of consistency on things that really matter to you. 100%. This is one of the things that I really want. And Islam, Islam is a way of life. What I find so beautiful is it brings us these things. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned consistency. Yeah, yeah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, he gave us solutions to these issues with our mental health. You know, with, the, with, 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 with for example, one of the reasons why people, you know, feel so, so anxious and they feel so insecure is because they're looking at social media, looking at others all the time. Islam yeah. taught us when you look at other people in terms of worldly matters, look at people above you because why? It's going to make you grateful. All of these things are from our religion. It's from our way of life. Above you, I mean below you. When you look at things in a worldly matter, yeah, yeah sorry, you look at things, b people yeah. below you, yeah. so that you be grateful. Yeah. It's 100%, man. It's amazing, man. It's really, 100%. really amazing. Okay, I think, I think on that note, bro, this is why I, I started doing this humanitarian stuff, bro. Yeah, you've been doing a lot of aid work. How's that going? It's, it's been going good, alhamdulillah, bro. But it's, it's, a, it's a reality check. The reason why I go, bro, obviously, to help mm. people and whatnot. Mm. But I think one of, the, one of the main reasons also is that it's a quick reality check, bro. With being online and whatnot, bro, the reality is, I was speaking to you about this yesterday, like you can get to a person's head easily. It can. See where I'm from. It can. And you think you're the man. So when you go on trips like this and you see how people are living, bro, <laughs> you realise you are not the man, bro. You're not the man. You're not the man until you help these people, man. Mm. But yeah. It's like when I, I went I went to Africa, you know, for some Dawah trips. Mm -hmm. You know, giving that word to some of the people is beautiful. I went to Malawi. Mm -hmm. When I went to Malawi, bro, you see people, you see kids. They got, there's a disease called beriberi disease. They have like big bellies as a result mm -hmm. of like what they've been eating yeah. and, you know, lack of certain, you know, things that they should have in their life. And bro, they're wearing like these ripped, I don't know where they get these from. Probably charities come and give them mm -hmm. like Chelsea tops, but it's all ripped up. He's got no clothes. And I know it's such a cliche thing to say, but you see them smiling so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And over That's here, bro, we live in a, such a fast lifestyle. Everyone's miserable. You go uni, everyone's miserable. <laughs> you get on the train, no one wants to talk to you. No one wants to do anything. And if any, everyone, if anyone on the train was to talk to you, you you'd look at them. Weirdo. This guy's a weirdo. This guy's a weirdo, bro. What, what are you talking to people? Yeah, yeah. Why are you talking to people? You absolute Literally. weirdo. Literally. Like you know, it's all the, the only guys that talk to you are the guys that come on the train and say, "Excuse me, mate, I need thirty five p for a hostel tonight." Yeah, you know like, th and 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 even that, like, we just brush aside because we're so desensitized, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, it's crazy, bro. It's absolutely crazy. You know, the last thing I want to quickly, very swiftly, speak to you about, and I think it would be injustice not to go back to this. Uh. You mentioned <clears throat> mannerisms. Yeah, how people's mannerisms affect you, and I've noticed you're not like you're not publicly a Dao figure. Mm. Like we'll put that out there, you're <laughs> not publicly like a Dao figure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're more of you're trying to show people I'm a I'm a young Muslim. I can be a Muslim. I can be interested in my faith, but still be out here. Yeah, just like you <laughs> doing my thing. Yeah? yeah, yeah. But when I was talking to you about Dao, like calling people, inviting people to Islam, you mentioned mannerisms mm. being something very important to you. Why mm. Why do you feel like mannerisms are important to you? Bro, you have to learn manners before you learn knowledge. That's what the scholars say. Mm. So if if I was going through a madness in my life, mm. and a guy's coming to me saying, Fear Allah, Allah, this is haram, I tell him, get the hell out of my face, man. Get out of wow. my face. What's, Why? What's, 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 what's your alternative? I'm here selling drugs. What, are you going to give me a job? No, mm. I can't. So, okay, I, don't, I don't have the ability to give you a job. Okay, leave me alone. Not to say this is what I'll do now, I'm saying this is how a lot of people think. Yeah. Bro, if you are not providing people with alternatives, they're going to look at you like you're a joke. Bro, you're, you're saying to a girl, like, you're saying to a girl, stop this club in life, um, um, put on hijab, you know, be, be, be closer to Allah. But then, uh, uh, say, say for example, she's, she's, she's broke. Okay, she's got no You money. would not pay for her alamiya course so she can learn the basics of Islam, even though she... Like maybe her parent, her parents were Muslim. She was born into a Muslim family, but when she was born and she was young, her parents might have died. So maybe she wasn't taught Islam, but she's still Muslim by name. If you want to call mm -hmm. it that, yeah. Mm -hmm. So are you now gonna step up and provide for this girl, bro? Mm. Are you now gonna pay for some courses where she can learn basics of her religion? If not, cut, bro. Mm. Or if this boy is now he's he's selling drugs, 
and you're telling him, Akhi, subhanAllah, why are you doing this haram stuff? Why are you, why are you living a haram life in a, 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 a way that Probably Allah prohibited, prohibited life? life? Bro, you're, you're, you're going to burn in the hellfire. Akhi, if you're coming at man with that, bro, he's not going to listen to you, bro. Come softly approach. with speech, bro. Yeah. Show him, tell him, bro, you know what? Okay, I don't, bro, I don't think what you're doing here is right, man. You're way better than that. Bro, you're that same guy in school. You used to get top grades, this, that, and the other. Bro, you can still go back to that stuff, you know? Um, or maybe if a person isn't interested in education, tell him, bro, you know what? You've always been a hustler, man. Leave this hustling style, but hustle in a way that's going to please you, please your Lord, where you're able to, pro to mm. provide for your family in a halal way. So bro, you know what I think? Approach. I think, bro, that what you're doing now isn't good based on what Allah has said. But bro, basically, I'm an owner of this company. Or basically, bro, I know this owner of this company and they're hiring now. Actually, and the guy says to you, yeah, but bro, I can't work. I've got a criminal record. Oh, bro, I can't work. Um, my, C my CV isn't good. He said, you know what, bro? Don't worry about that. I've got this company who helped build the CVs. And in your head, you know they charge like 200 pounds to make you a CV, a good CV. But you're not going to tell him that because you're going to pay for that 200 pounds mm -hmm. yourself. Okay, if people were sincere like that, bro, a lot of people, matters will be fixed, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's about taking a man out, showing him tarbiyah. Take him, bro. Yeah. Take a man to creams before you take him to the masjid. Wow. A yeah. man's in a masjid and he doesn't know what's so going on around him. Soften the person's heart. Soften and him, the, and, and you know what's amazing? This is what Islam teaches us to do. This is how we, you know, the Prophet of Islam. You know, for any of our listeners, you know, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he expressed to us in a narration that he came to perfect good manners, mm -hmm. good manners. Yeah. And if you see. When we call people to Islam, we don't even need to call them. Sometimes it's just your manners. You know, you're from Yemen originally. Mm. We hear of... Al-Iman or Yemeni. Sorry, what, what, what language was that? There's a, oh, Arabic. Okay. There's a hadith that says Iman is Yemeni. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. And, and the manners. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You took it somewhere else now. I don't have that though. <laughs> but you're Yemeni. Yeah, you're yeah. Yemeni originally. Yeah, yeah. The way that the Indonesian people came to Islam is a very, very popular thing. Yemeni traders came and they treated them with good manners. Yeah. These people were so surprised by the mannerisms these people have because of their religion, Islam. They were like, you know what? We need to embrace this. Yeah, of course, man. Mannerisms, guys. Mannerisms. goes a very long way. We all need to work on them. Very long Nasir, way. bro, it's been absolutely beautiful having it's you on the pleasure, show, man. Bro. MashaAllah, like, I, I think this has been very deep. We've spoken about, you know, mental health, you know, mannerisms. We've spoken about some of your journey, the journey you went through, things you faced, inconsistency, all of these things. And I really, really hope that people can go away from this and reflect on what they need to do, mm. you know, to get through their problems and ultimately, ultimately they come closer to God. 100%. You know? Brothers and sisters, this has been it for our episode of Rerooted with... Beautiful brother, lovely brother, Nasser Al Yarimi. If you have any suggestions for us, comment them down below. Inshallah, any guests you'd like us to get on the show. Also, if you're not subscribed to iERA's YouTube channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you can see more of me and more of some of our lovely guests. Until next time, look after yourselves. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That is a wrap. Dum, 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 bow. Shum, 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 shum.